it's, it's my privilege today to fill in for Pastor Reishi. On this Father's Day, once again, we recognize those who are fathers and father figures, and we hope that you appreciate this honor and are also listening as we go through the message today to see how Jesus has compassion and love for all his people. Today's text is a lesson about the disciples as they're crossing the sea, something that some of them had done literally hundreds of times. Some of them were fishermen by birth, and they'd been out on the water since they were of early age. Yet somehow, this particular storm came upon them so quickly that they were unprepared. And I'd, I'd like you to visualize for a moment a storm that could come up so fast that even, well, even trained sailors become terrified in just a few moments. Jesus is in the back of the boat. They've been doing ministry all day long. The crowd had gone, and now they were crossing to their next ministry point. The disciples, with the water splashing over them, go to Jesus with the question, Don't you care? It seemed amazing to them that he would be sleeping. Doesn't he know we're in trouble? Jesus lets them know the answer to that question as he lets us know the answer to that question as well. In the storms of life, in the troubles, in the difficulties, in that which breaks us down, God is there. And in his way, his own way, he always makes a way for us. But how would you react if you were in the boat? Would you have had courage to just dig in, get out the oars, move faster? Sometimes when we face the storms of life, we try to do that. We try to work a little harder. We try to do something that somehow will make it all go away. When the best thing, the first thing we need to do is go to Jesus. The disciples had that right. But they went to them, went to him in fear, wondering if he could do anything, rather than trusting this Savior, who had already performed many miracles. Yes, he would care for them as he cared for the blind, the lame, all those who were in need. But they were frightened. And being frightened, they didn't act like grown-up men. They went and tried to find the first help they could find. And it was Jesus, and it was good that they went to him. But once again, sometimes we reach out for, reach out for solutions for our problems without thinking first to begin in the name of Christ. We go on our way and do our thing, but somehow it doesn't always work out because we've forgotten to go hand in hand with our Lord. Now for the disciples in the boat that day, the worst part was thinking maybe Jesus really doesn't care for us. Maybe that's why this is happening. And sometimes in our lives, when Satan tempts us, when things just seem like they'll never get right, we're tempted to think too. Is it there anyone who really cares? Isn't there anyone who can always count on? And to answer that question, and the question for the disciples as well, Jesus says yes. He gets up and he quiets that storm. Peace, be still. And it became calm. Jesus could do that because he is the Lord of the universe. The disciples had lost sight of that. They had forgotten that this Lord that was with them for this time of ministry was there also at creation. But in his ministry now, he had given up. 
He had humbled himself, the scriptures tell us, and took on human form, being in likeness as a man. He humbled himself and had all the human needs that humans have. He needed sleep. He got tired. He needed food. He needed all those things. But he gladly took them as well as the way of the cross for you and for me. He took upon himself our sin. And he went to the cross and to the grave gladly for us that we might have that Easter message. He's risen. He's risen indeed. Oh, what a glorious day. Indeed, every day with the Lord is a glorious day. Well, we're going to have some ups and we're going to have some downs and some ins and outs. When we continue to be with the Lord, even the difficulties provide ways to see our God in a new light. Glenn Shriver remembers a time in his life when he said in a prayer to God, I want to become closer to you. I want to be more near you, more connected, more aware of your presence. The week after that prayer, Glenn's supervisor said, you're being relocated. The company wants to open a new office in Australia. They were there in England. It would mean that he would have to go a long way away from his family and his friends. At that same time, his parents divorced. All kinds of troubles were coming his way. And then he remembered the prayer. Lord, help me get closer to you. And it was in his storms of life that God was closer to him. Because he didn't go to that new job alone. God was with him. And that's the lesson that the disciples needed to learn. That their God was with them. But in the storms of life, they could learn even more about this Savior. And that's what's so central and important in this miracle in this lesson, that God is there and can be, it can always be there to help us. We can count on Him for His love for us never fails. A few years ago, a woman named Chastity Patterson lost her father on Father's Day. After his death, Chastity was only 20 years old. She continued to send a daily text to his telephone number, telling her father what had happened for the day, the ups and the downs. She did it day after day for four years. Then something rather amazing happened on the fourth anniversary of her father's death. When she put the text in this time, there was a reply. It seems that the telephone company had given her father's number over to someone else. And that person named Brad had been hearing those messages for four years. And he said, I just had to call you. I had to call you because at the same time that you lost your father, I lost a daughter in a car accident. And your words and telling me how you were getting along without your dad were just the things I needed to get me through my storm, my grief. God will make a way. That's the unique thing about our God. About a year and a half ago, I sang the first verse of the song, God Will Make a Way, as part of a message. And about six, eight months ago, I had Randy, Randy uh, in our praise service sing the whole thing during the reflection time. A number of you mentioned that you liked the song, you'd heard it before, and you thought it was an appropriate way 
an appropriate thing to sing a bit indeed about the way God always works things out in our life. So I have gotten that song, its lyrics, and its sound put on YouTube, and we're going to see it on the screen now, and I invite you to join with me in singing God Will Make a Way, whether we're in the wilderness or in the desert, he will make a way for you and me. being swamped by the waves, or whether it be the crosses of Calvary, God makes a way for you and for me. His love touches our hearts, and we grow. So I would encourage you, I would commend you, I would challenge you, let go and believe in this God who's making a way just for you and for me. Believe in the God whose promises are never broken and will not forsake you. Believe in the God who went to the cross willingly, humbly, and to the grave, but rose again that we might have victory as well. Yes, there's going to be storms in life. There's going to be ups and downs. But we have a God walking with us who will make the way. Zephaniah the prophet is our closing words for today. The Lord your God is with you. He is mighty to save. His people are precious to him. And when they are hurting, lost, confused, he quiets them with his love. And he rejoices over them with the victory song. Our God will make a way. Amen. And now the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in faith. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.